Hello, everybody. Um, this is DFS Chan coming to you here to talk about the EPL soccer slate um, for Saturday morning, August 20th. Um, it's a four game slate, um, but it's a very, very interesting slate, in my opinion, because we do not have a big favorite like Man City, Liverpool, um, and teams like that. We just do not have that on the slate. So I think it's going to be a four close matchups that are on this slate. So I think it's going to be a very fun GPP slate, in my opinion. There are a lot of ways to go about for uh, lineup construction, um, but I will share my match predictions, but also the core plays for cash lineups, but also GPP lineups as I go through these uh, formations. So this is a four game here, as you can see, that starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time. Um, the biggest favorite on the slate is actually Leicester City at minus 120 to win outright. Um, in soccer, for those of you uh, who haven't played soccer DFS or haven't looked at soccer odds before, as you know, uh, some some of you guys may know the soccer games can can end in a draw. So there are odds, three odds, one to win outright for each team, and then one for um, a draw. So you see that Leicester City is the biggest favorite on the slate at minus 120, and that's not saying very much, you know. Um, Southampton might as well win this game, in my opinion. Um, it's more of a pick -em game, and that tells you, like, how close these matchups are on the slate. So... Like I said, it's a very interesting slate for GPP purposes, but I do think Leicester City will be popular um, in games uh, and, and player stacks um, and all. So let's go over Leicester City. Like I said, minus 120 favorite. Uh, and it all has to start with James Madison, right? James Madison takes a lot of their set pieces and he is, ha you know, he has a lot of upside and goal scoring and assist as well. Um, so I like Madison a lot. Um, and then after that, it really depends on how you want to, <clears throat> how you think the game script will um, carry out. In my opinion, like Madison is really the only person for cash, even though Leicester City is the biggest favorite. Um, I think for GPP, feel free to go crazy with Barnes, who has, you know is coming back from injuries and is likely to start. And then Vardy clearly is this, their striker and most likely take their penalties um, if they get one. So I like I like those guys for GPP purposes. I don't think I'm going to have any Dewsbury Hall. I think he's a little too expensive for my taste. Um, but, you know, he can he can he can definitely score um, on a on a given slate. So I will definitely keep keep him in mind. Sorry about the static here. Um, but I, I prefer Tielemans over Dewsbury Hall um, for GBP purposes because Tielemans is a little more uh, – it's cheaper, first of all, and then has about the same upside as Dewsbury Hall in scoring, I think. so. And in terms of their fullbacks, I mean, Justin and Castagne, I think they're okay. Um, Justin, in my opinion, I prefer Justin over Castagne. Um, I would just – same upside. I think they're going to have maybe two, three crosses. Um, so not very much. I think their floors are very low. Um, and I, I don't think they're going to be priorities for me un unless you're trying to stack Vardy or Barnes with one of the fullbacks. I can definitely see that as a less viable Leicester stack. And then for Southampton, um, it's another expensive midfielder in James Ward-Prowse. I think in an unfavorable matchup like this, um, he has proven us wrong <laughs> and still average more than double digits. Um, but if I have to choose between Madison and Ward Prowse, and I think that's going to be the the dilemma that you're going to have um, because both guys are very expensive on the slate. Um, but I prefer Madison because not only because Leicester City is a favorite in this matchup, but I just feel like Madison has been in a better form than uh, James Ward-Prowse. And James Ward-Prowse, unfortunately, is on a shitty team. You can see all these players around him. Uh, so I do think Madison has a more of an upside there. Um, And Madison has a better open play potential than Ward-Prowse, in my opinion. 
But Ward Prowse is a better free kick taker. So if you think Southampton is going to take get a lot of free kicks, which obviously that's not the type of like the thing you want to bank on. It's not. It's never guaranteed that Southampton is going to get five to ten free kicks and corner kicks, right? Like that's not. That's just not a good thing to rely on. Um, whereas I think. You know, you would you see the usage rates for Madison in the open play. I mean, that's pretty high. So I I definitely much prefer Madison over Ward Prowse in that regard. Um, and then for Southampton, if you want to stack them for GPP, which I understand. I mean, this matchup, I think I can definitely see um, a high implied goals total for this matchup. So I think Southampton definitely has a shot to score here and. For GPP, yeah, I mean, Janepo and then Aribo. Um, and then one of Adams and Armstrong. I can definitely see those three work out for Southampton, but I think I'm still, I think I have uh, this matchup prediction as Leicester City is going to win uh, one to zero or two to one. So, and then the next biggest favorite on the slate is Everton minus 110. Everton has been pretty bad in my opinion this this uh this season. Um, but then they're playing against Nottingham Forest, who just got promoted to the EPL, and this is their third game in the in the EPL after they got promoted, and they've looked pretty bad. But I have one player on Nottingham Forest that I'll dive into right now that I love watching last weekend. Nico Williams, in my opinion, is probably the mu a must in all of my lineups. He was everywhere. He just took all the set pieces. He was great in the open play, crossing the ball, creating chances uh, for scoring and dangerous all around on the field. I really like him a lot here against Everton, who is prone to giving up a lot of chances, in my opinion. Um, even though Everton's a favorite, I that does not scare me. Um, I think um, Nottingham Forest will fare well here, and I think Nico Williams will be the engine behind that. So I will have Nick, Nico Williams in all of my lineups. And then for Nottingham Forest, if you think they're going to do well against Everton, which they can, Everton is not the best team uh, on defense, um, I probably would stack him with... Awanini, Awanini, um, he played okay. He had a lot of chances last weekend, but he couldn't capitalize. He capitalized on one of them, but it was more of a deflection than his shot. Um, but he was dangerous all around. He just could not finish. Um, and then Lingard has been a little disappointing. Um, so I would just target Nico Williams and one of the strikers between Johnson and Awanini. So. And then for Everton, it starts with Gray and Anthony Gordon, only because uh, they signed, they had a huge signing at McNeil in the offseason, but McNeil has just given up a lot of the set pieces and everything. Um, I'm not a huge fan of McNeil. He also doesn't take enough shots, whereas Gray... <laughs> whereas Gray and Gordon are, are more aggressive in taking those kind of shots. So, yeah, I, I'd go with Gray and Gordon. Uh, I think Gray, I think both are cash viable, but Gordon's a little too expensive. A little too expensive for my taste. I think Gray has taken a lot of the set pieces, so I like Gray a lot on this slate. And then Mikolenko and then Patterson, yeah, I think I would definitely play them, either of them or both of them in GPPs. Uh, and stack them with Anthony Gordon, whoever plays the striker. Um, I just do not like McNeil because he doesn't take enough shots. So I would target these four, Mikolenko, Gray, Gordon, and Patterson, probably in my GPP lineups. Um, but yeah, I think Everton's going to win. I think it's going to be an open match where I think both sides are viable for DFS purposes. I think it's going to be... Um, I don't think it's going to be a slow matchup, just like the next matchup I'll talk about in Crystal Palace. So I think Everton and Nottingham Forest is a viable matchup to target. And as mentioned, Crystal Palace and Aston Villa, um, they tend to play a little on the slower side. 
Um, but you know, both teams have some good pieces that you can target, I think, in my opinion. Um, for example, Crystal Palace being a home favorite slightly. Um, I'd say Zaha is probably my favorite player to target. Um, he he takes a lot of shots. I mean, he creates a lot of chances. He's clearly the best player on that team, in my opinion. Um, but as a takes a lot of the set pieces, I think he has a higher floor than Zaha, but Zaha um, creates a lot of chances as well. So I, I target those two, first of all, as a and Zaha. And then after that for GPP, I mean, Edward and AU, um, I think those guys can definitely um, fill the scoring sheet as they tend to take some shots as well as creating chances. Um, so I would definitely target those four. And then I'm not that interested in their fullbacks, Tyreek Mitchell and Klein. Um, they have not crossed, the, you know, crossed as much as they did last season. Um, they just don't go as forward with Eze, IU, and Zaha all up, top, up, up there that like to cross the ball and create chances or take shots. So I think that kind of um, allows the allows Mitchell and Klein to stay back in the back four. And then Aston Villa, um, John, I mean, John McGinn um, has been taking a lot of the set pieces over Lucas Digne. So for those of you who may be interested in playing Digne, just be aware that he does not have the same type of floor that he used to last season, uh, only because McGinn has been taking some and then Buendia could take some um, theoretically. So, you know, Whatever that means, uh, you know, I think, like I said, this matchup is going to supposed to be a very slow matchup. I don't think enough goals will be scored. But, you know, if you are stacking Villa pieces, I would start with McGinn and Buendia and then Danny Ings probably and, or Ollie Watkins, one of those Ings and Watkins guys, depending on your construction. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Aston Villa could be dangerous, but <sighs> Crystal Palace at home, they tend to play a little more defensively. Um, so I don't think it's going to be producing a lot of goals in this matchup. Um, so I would probably fade this matchup maybe in GPP that, you know, could be the case, but, um, yeah, I have it. I have, I have this matchup as a draw zero, zero. All right. Fulham versus Brentford is the last matchup to talk about. Um, it's a very interesting matchup. I think Fulham can definitely win this. Um, they're at home, and my favorite GPP striker is here for Fulham, uh, Mitrovic. Um, he is more of a volume shooter um, that I really like for DFS purposes in GPP. Um, he gets a lot of scoring chances, um, and and, and um, I would tar I would maybe pair him with Andres Pereira, who takes a lot of their set pieces. And then any other pieces like Reed and Cabano, yeah, I mean they can they can def definitely um, show up and score. Um, Fulham's offense has looked very very good in the first couple of weeks, um, and then Anthony Robinson and then Kenny Tete, their fullbacks are definitely viable on this slate. Um, so yeah, I would target those guys um, probably on the outside as you see Robinson, Tete, Cabano, Reed, and Pereira and Mitrovic. Pereira, like I said, has probably has the highest floor um, just be because he takes a lot of the set pieces and more than likely he's going to cross it to Mitrovic who would likely get a shot off. Um, so, you know, for that shots assisted upside um, as well as crosses, high floor, I like Pereira on the slate. And then on the other side of the matchup is Brentford where – They've looked okay. I think they're going to probably lose to Fulham, in my opinion. That's my match prediction. But for Brentford, I would have to start with Jensen, who takes their set pieces. But then for GPP, I mean, Boimo and Tony are the guys that you want to target because they just do a lot in connection with their uh, scoring chances and chances created for Brentford. So I would target those guys. And then their fullbacks have been okay. I mean, I think they were better last year. Um, but now with the Silva and Jensen crossing a lot, I, I like I like these guys at the top better than the fullbacks. So anyway, so that's all I got for you guys today. Um, if you guys have any other questions or just want to chat soccer, let me know. This video was sponsored by by True DFS, so go check check out their channel. 
Um, but once the starters come out at 9 a.m. Eastern time, I will share my thoughts in the True DFS Discord. So yeah, feel free to come join us. And otherwise, uh, yeah, hope to see you guys at the top of the leaderboard. Have a good one. Bye-bye.